All right, in the previous video, we looked at how to calculate the Born exponent, and before that, we looked at how, how to determine the Madelung constant. Okay, the Born exponent is obviously a lot more tedious to determine, but we're going to need both of these for our future equations that we're actually going to use. Now, we looked at in previous videos, lattice energy, this very simple equation right here. It turns out that equation is an ideal equation for ideal circumstances, but in all reality, we have lots of deviations from ideality. We have to look at real lattice energy behavior, and so for that we're going to look at something called the Born-Landa equation. All right, so the, the total lattice energy is going to be, um, n by the way is Avogadro's number, but it's Avogadro's number times the lattice energy due to the attraction plus Avogadro's number times the lattice energy due to the repulsion. And remember for the attraction, which was due to the Madeline constant, we had a z plus z minus times m over d, and hopefully that's what you see here, plus the repulsive contribution in the Born exponent, b over d to the n, and you see that b over, they use r here, but it's going to be the same thing, r or d is the interionic distance, okay, the distance between the two ions in the lattice. And then you have n here, which is the Born exponent, and m in the first term, which is the Madelung constant. So we're taking into account both the attractive and the repulsive contributions to the lattice energy. And this right here is the Born-Landa equation. Okay, one thing that they do here, however, is we're going to put it in a form that's a little bit easier to use. Um, I guess it's debatable on whether or not it's easy to use, but suffice it to say we're going to combine some terms um, ultimately get rid of the exponent here and get an equivalent equation where we're going to have the lattice energy in kilojoules per mole is equal to a constant out in front that's actually the product of a bunch of constants. It's going to be 1,389 times z plus times z minus divided or times the Madelung constant divided by the interionic distance times the quantity 1 minus 1 over the Born exponent. All right. So it seems kind of bad, but this is actually what we're going to use to calculate the lattice energy. And this is the, what we're going to use when we say the Born-Landa equation. Okay? Um, and note, the Madeline constant and Born exponent are in both equations, so we're going to have to know both of those. Okay? All right. And this over here is called the Born-Mayer equation, or Born-Mayer, I'm not exactly sure how you say that. Um, this one we're going to look at in another video, but what I want to do right now is actually go to a calculation. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to copy this. Let's put it in paintbrush. Get a new one. Okay. All right. So this is the equations. These are the this is the equation that we're going to use. All right. So here's the problem that we're going to be looking at. All right. Assuming a rock salt structure for rubidium bromide. So when you see a rock salt structure, what that means is, and I need to get this, I'm actually going to copy this. This is the table of Madeline constants. Let me actually move it over here so we can see it. All right, so this up a little bit, kind of rearrange. Okay, so when you see a rock salt structure for anything, doesn't matter what the uh, the compound is rock salt structure is meaning sodium chloride. Okay, so that means our Madelung constant is going to be 1.75. All right, so let me go ahead and write that M. Let me do this in red. All right, our Madelung constant is going to be 1.75. I believe that was right. Mm -hmm. All right, now we need to calculate the Born exponents. All right, so we're doing this for rubidium bromide. So this is for rubidium. Rubidium has a plus one charge. Bromide has a negative one charge. We want to calculate the Born exponents for both of these. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint where I have my periodic table. So rubidium. Rubidium is right here, but it's going to lose an electron and get to the configuration of krypton. And for krypton, the outermost electron is, has a principal quantum number of 4 because it's rho 4 over here. So that means the Born exponent for that is 10. So for rubidium, the Born exponent is 10. All right. For bromide, let's go back. Bromide's right here. It's going to gain an electron. So it, again, has the electron configuration of krypton. This is a principal quantum number of outermost electron being 4, so also has a Born exponent of 10. 
All right, so obviously the average of those is 10. We're gonna say the average is 10. All right, so we need now to know D naught. That's the only other thing we really need because everything else is pretty easy. So it turns out that a good estimation for D naught is the radius of the cation plus the radius of whatever the anion is. So that means we're gonna to have to probably look those up. Now considering the fact this is rubidium bromide, we'll just look those up, and you can pretty much get them anywhere. I have this right here, this is a little table I found online. Let's look up rubidium, there it is, 265 picometers. All right, so let's write that down. So the radius of rubidium, let me redo that obviously, radius of rubidium was 265 picometers. All right, and let's find the radius of bromine or bromide. All right, so let's do control F, bromine. You can't really see it there, but it's 94 picometers. So for bromine, it's 94 picometers. So what we're gonna do is add those. So 265 plus 94 picometers is, let's add those together, got my calculator. So it's 265 plus 94. And so I'm getting about 359 picometers. All right. Now, the general rule of thumb is that when you plug D naught into this equation, the Bornland equation, it has to be in angstroms. So we need to convert 359 picometers. We need to convert that. Let me do it like this. Convert it to angstroms. All right. So what is a picometer? All right. Let's think about it. All right. So... We have milla is 10 to the third, micro is 10 to the sixth, uh, nano is 10 to the ninth, and so pico is 10 to the twelfth. So that means that what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, there's 10 to the twelfth picometers in a meter, all right, and one meter is 10 to the tenth angstroms. All right, so that's how I'm going to do this. And ultimately what that means is it's going to be 359 divided by 100 because when I do 10 to the 10th divided by 10 to the 12th, that's going to be divided by 100. So this is going to be 3.59 angstroms. And that's going to be my value for, oops, not D0, up there, D0, like that. Okay, so that's my Intarionic distance. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking the sum of the cations radius and the anions radius and that's my D naught. So our lattice energy is going to be 1389 times. Now what's our charge? Our charge for rubidium is 1 and bromine is, is 1 also, although this is going to be 1 times negative 1, right, because bromide is negative. What is our Madelon constant? Well, because it was a rock salt structure, we determined the Madelon constant was 1.75. So 1.75 divided by the inner ionic distance, which is 3.59. And for this formula to work, it has to be in angstroms, okay? And then we're gonna multiply that times the quantity, one minus one over the Born exponent, and it's the average of them. They were both 10, so the average is 10, so over 10. All right, and so now we're ready to calculate the lattice energy using the Bornland equation. All right, the first thing I would do, let's do 1 minus 1 divided by 10, that should be 0 0.9, and then let's do times 1389 times negative 1 times 1.75, and now divided by 3.59. And so I'm getting that the lattice energy is let's say it's approximately negative 609.4 and this is going to give it to us in units of kilojoules per mole. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and box that answer. Let's go ahead and move that. Box the answer if I can find that. Here it is. So that's using, this is specifically using the Born-Landa equation. We're gonna come back here in just a little bit after, in probably the next video, and we're actually going to um, use the Kapustinsky approximation, which is good when you don't know 
the lattice structure, and we're going to see if we get anything close to this. In the meantime, I want to go back to, so we talked about the Born-Landa equation. So this takes into account the Madelung constant and the Born exponent, but because it takes into account the Madelung constant, you ultimately have to know the crystal structure or the lattice type. Okay, but what happens if you don't know the lattice type? Then you use what's called the Kapustinsky approximation, which is going to, what we cover in the next video. Now, to conclude this video, we're going to talk about the Born-Meyer equation. Now, the Born-Meyer equation is actually very similar um, to the other equation. We still have this m times z plus times z minus over um, d naught. Notice its similarity, at least in that respect. We still have this 1389 out in front. However, the term we multiply by is different. In the Born-Landa equation, it's 1 minus 1 over n. In the Born-Meyer equation, it's 1 minus this rho divided by d naught. Okay? And the rho here is a constant. It's about 34.5 picometers, and we divide by the interionic distance. We can also, like I said, if we don't know the lattice type, we can use what's called the Kapustinsky approximation, and that's what we're going to cover in the next video. And then we're going to do a calculation similar to what we did in, in this video. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.